Hmm, what's the ultimate point? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, game number two here for the Ting Open Qualifiers. This is the winner's bracket qualifying match. And once again, check out bttv.ting.com if you guys want to get $25 in credit. And also go learn more about Ting. The TLDR, U.S. mobile phone service, looking to save you some money if you live in the United States. Plus, let's be honest, you get $5,000 of StarCraft II for a tournament, and it doesn't necessarily stop here. That's some good stuff. Zongrip had alluded before they supported Shoutcraft America. Last year they did the 2v2 tournament with Nate. We even cast some of that, and now they're working with us on this. So they've been uh, they've been around for a while, and they've they've got no bad track record, which is a rarity these days. I feel that is a good point. <laughs> but we are gonna hop in the game, and then top left side of Lirlac Crest, it's gonna be Root Gaming's Blue Terran, Kelazur. In the bottom left, as the teal Terran, way to go, guys, with the colors. It's the uh, player, Masa. And I do apologize to the colorblind people in the audience. We know how this is going to go. Unfortunately, there's no way to swap this out once we're in game. I forgot about this because we had this problem before, and then we said we'd oh. try to remember. But that was only for that cast. Now, for this cast, we'll try to remember, okay? Right. So, okay. Why even bother putting teal in the game? You know what colors they could have put in the game? White and black? Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I don't know. That could be kind of racist sound. We don't want we don't want people talking about the white Terran players and the black oh, Terran players. But white looks so good on Terran. <laughs> I know, it actually really, really does. And black just looks cool on any race. Can you imagine black Protoss? Okay, this is actually sounding really weird. See, this is probably why they didn't put it in the game. <laughs> the black Protoss. So oh, oh can't do that anymore, guys. Cut it cut it loose. <laughs> The yellow Terran Polt versus the white Protoss Huck. Wow. Okay, only if you say it like that, though. Because <laughs> yellow is in the game. They'll, like, they'll have it disabled, so you can't pick two colors. Like, okay, if someone picks... Actually, why don't they do that? If someone picks dark blue, why not just make it so you can't pick light blue as the, op as the opponent? Because it's pretty nitpicky when you really think about it. I know. But... It's so dumb. I feel bad. Blizzard, Blizzard confirmed doesn't hate colorblind people. They just hate colors. <laughs> Maybe they can't see shapes. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shut up. I done gone shape blind. Thanks, uh, Papa Mitch, for 21 months in a row. Why am I not getting sounds for that now? I am. I'm special. Huh. Have I missed any other ones? I'm sorry, guys. Uh, no, Papa Mitch. So. Okay, cool. 21 months. I'll just go refresh Twitch alerts. I know that some people have actually been having a lot of problems with Twitch alerts lately, so I'm hoping that's not going to be afflicting us now. Yes. Go yes. me. Me. I want a bank heist. Oh, I thought you were gonna like, get excited about the Liberator versus the Raven dynamic. I actually <laughs> like the Raven a lot for this, but uh, we'll talk about that in a, more in a moment. It's a bad scrappy fight going down. Kells are gonna take a very nice win at the start. Two Hellions versus two Reapers. Hellions should win. Yeah, so it's quite difficult to see whose Reapers they, that were, but yes! <laughs> they both have to hit and run through this, which is kind of funny because they both have stupid attack rates, but yeah, the Hellions clean this up. Third run on the way. The Raven, though, is interesting to me for a couple of different reasons. Masa might be worried about Banshees on a map like this, and I can't blame him, but I really love the new damage on the Raven. The auto turret actually is kind of crazy now. Yeah. Crazy amount of burst damage, as opposed to what it used to be. Oh. Well, I guess it's going to have been in a more awkward time. Hellions attacking your supply depots, Liberator in your main base. <laughs> <laughs> the inevitable is coming. <laughs> That's going to close you the flame. This is like uh, Star Wars when he freezes the, the laser midair. Oh, the, the new Star Wars, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the inevitable is coming. I love it. Yeah, what's up with players uh, having connections to Maru being amazing, right? You got Maru himself, you got Maru Thermal, you got Masa, who's like the best Canadian Terran known as Maru in real life. Like, what is Maru isn't. Maru's actually not that great anymore. Shut up. No, he's good. All right. Point is, uh, oh, SCV's actually getting prepared to be pulled into this. Well, no, the Liberator is oh. on the uh, Yeah, Liberator's being denied. I thought he was actually going to try to repair the depot. I was like, that's crazy. Well, he's going to be very careful. Like, yeah, like keeping the SCVs like they were. The Hellions were pretty close to them. Yeah, that's that's why I was like, what's happening here? But the Liberator <laughs> does get dealt with. Combination of auto turret and the Viking looks like it did his job. And uh, only four SCVs go down. But a lot of last mining for what is early game TVT. They were pulled off for some time. And in fact, we can show you guys thanks to the crafts. What? In fact, what? there you go. 500-ish minerals lost compared to his opponent over that small, like, one minute almost window. Yeah. And that's very important because his orbital command is a bit faster than Kelezer's. Now, they're both on the high ground. So uh, they're actually going to be pairing up, you know, quite close to each other. At the end of the day, Kelzer might have just taken a lead because of the lost mining time. We'll see if the Banshee from Masa, though, can do any damage. I guess they both got Banshees, but it's, 
Miles has a raven already in a Viking. Right. So this, it shouldn't get away with much. But there's always that chance it's out of position, and we see Banshees sometimes go ham in situations they shouldn't. Uh, that wall was also never put down again, by the way. Actually, you know what I would like more in this situation? Don't use the Banshee for harass. Just take it with the army and go. Yeah, that can sometimes be like a much better plan, but it looks like they're both going to just stick with the harassments. He would so. annihilate the Marines. He'd take out the mm -hmm. tank. Mm -hmm. Kelzer is going for his own Raven, so they both have detection. I don't think Kelzer ever got a Viking. Because he got a, got a Liberator. Yeah, but he won't need it. Because, of course, the uh, the Liberator is the only thing that requires the Viking due to its range. The and He's getting a Viking next. But the Banshee can be dealt with combination Marines. And Oh, the Raven's actually out of position. Awkward! No, go back! <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, this is this, this can at least help uh, make sure this doesn't get too out of hand. Yeah, it, it can pick up a lot of SCVs. So this is something that he has to consistently micro, which sucks. Because he is trying to push. And he wants all of his attention dedicated to the push. Not keeping the SCVs alive. Hmm. The push is quite a scary one, by the way. Masa, his army is not bad, especially if it's, you know, able to stay in this position without medevacs. It's, uh, it's going to be the case. Kills are can't break it. This is actually Ooh, pretty monster even? push. Picks up the tank there. Here comes the Raven. Auto turrets are going to get traded out for a moment. Uh, Masa's got more auto turrets. If he places them down now, he'll take a really good fight, but he's being really lazy about this for whatever reason. Complacent, probably a better word than lazy, but still, nonetheless, this means he has to give up the natural. Command center gets lifted. I can't say that this is going to go down to the marine fire, but that raven with two auto turrets, I think, would have held that position. Hmm. Well, this is uh, very nice for Killazer, who already had that nice little pull on the SCVs, the Liberator harassment, and is now pulling ahead with his command center on the low ground. The Banshee comes in, but the Mister this time is actually really well placed, and will stop that. Might get a tank, though. That's nice. Uh, on the side of the map, the Banshee's oh, still quite. being annoying. It's worth noting, like, not a lot of workers were lost due to uh, Masa's Banshee never really getting in oh. there. Oh, okay. The Banshee was still alive. I thought it died, but then it died. <laughs> yeah, might as well have died. Uh, loses Viking control, which means he loses high ground vision. So this is where Kelzer might start pulling back out of this. Uh, either way, just pushing the natural base back and getting some workers killed makes him fantastic in this spot. Uh, does anything does any is anything else going well for Masa, I guess? Who just lost his command center, he doesn't have a third one. His army is bigger than Kelazer's, so maybe a counter could do something. I'm not sure if he could get Kelazer's command center lifted, but maybe uh like tear down his army. He has two medevacs, he could also try and go for a drop, and with the air control that he has and the Raven, a drop into the main would not be a bad idea. Mm. He does pick up two tanks. Handful of Marines. I really like the two tank eight Marine version of this quite a bit, but he's actually just going to siege him up and go. So this this is not an attack that I think will devastate Kelzer by any means, but this is a strong attack. He's got a pretty nice army lead. kelzer has got a lot of tanks, but he's got no mobility for those tanks. Until these two medevacs pop, he's going to be kind of stuck in a very awkward position where if Moss is silly enough to drop into him, Kelzer will win a fight, but there's no reason that should happen. Like to walk mm. his tanks into the tank fire. Oh man, it's getting all kinds of uncomfortable and awkward here on the front lines. Yeah, Kelzer with the uh, he was ten army supply down, now almost twenty. It's looking quite bad in the defense. Bad on the defense, and if he has to live his command center, I mean, sure, that's that's revenge for Masa, but it might be worse than living her command center. He might just straight up die here. Masa is a very commanding position. I didn't think this counterattack would be so deadly, but it's. Used to be the case. Trying to keep this tank alive from that Banshee in the backside, and doing so might give up his command center if he's not careful. Forced to lift, falling back, nothing to fall back to. Third base not going to help him at all if he can't stop this attack. I got um, missile turret. This is going to be very hard to break with four tanks and the the Raven really adding a lot of that damage yeah. for the you know, one second pushback. It's very important. Even if it's not auto turrets, things like a point defense drone can go a long way if you want to push into a missile turret or something like that. But looks like Moss is going to go for the break. Or sorry, Kelzer is going to go for the break. Uh, pulls the SCVs into this. Always dangerous, always scary, but that does let him get uh, through the Marines. Now the question is, can he deal with those nope, tanks? Nope, nope. Nope. GG. Masa. He had those SCVs to lose, too. Like, if only he was able to break it. Yeah. But congratulations to Masa. He'll be the first player through the North American brackets and qualified into the Ting Open $5,000 tournaments. So, congrats to him. Uh, 